So in this video, um, we're solving for the angle of an inclined plane given an acceleration of some object. It reads, a cart rolls down an inclined plane with an acceleration of 2.00 meters per second squared. Assuming no loss due to friction, so a frictionless incline, what angle is the plane inclined? As always, we want to start by drawing a sketch of the picture. Uh, or of what's happening. So we've got our inclined plane, we've got a mass. There is a weight that always points directly towards the earth, a force due to gravity. There's a force of friction, sometimes, that goes up the plane and there is a normal force. In this case, we know that that force of friction is zero newtons because we are assuming we're on a, a frictionless incline. You'll notice that I didn't give a mass. There's no mass here. And up to this point, we've only ever dealt with resolving forces on an incline. Well, we know, because we looked at it already, that we can take this FG and we can resolve it into a perpendicular or Y component and parallel or X component. It's this X component that makes us accelerate down the incline. So I'm just going to write that my uh, x component of gravity that makes us accelerate down the incline is equal to mass times that acceleration down the incline. In other words, F net equals mass times A net. A net force causes a mass to accelerate. Now we know our weight right here is equal to mg, but we're not given a mass. So what can we do? Well, let's look at this picture again. Normally, if the incline weren't there, this mass would fall at a rate of 9.81 meters per second squared, straight down the acceleration due to gravity. As it turns out, acceleration is also a vector quantity. So we can resolve acceleration as well. Just like we could resolve this weight, we can resolve this acceleration. So there is a component of that acceleration which goes down the plane, and there is a component that goes into the plane. We care right now about the one that goes down the plane. So sine theta equals gx over g. Theta is our inverse sine function of gx, and just recognize right now that this gx right here is the same thing as this ax. I was just trying to show over here that it's a component of the acceleration due to gravity, and over here I was just trying to make it look more familiar in our f equals ma form, but they're the same thing. So now we just plug in. We know 2.00 meters per second squared because that's what we're told. And we know the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. And so it's very easy to plug that in our calculator and we find 11.8 degrees. Now, what if you didn't like that method? Well, let's take a look at this. Maybe you can't remember that we can resolve this acceleration due to gravity, but you've memorized how to do this already. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll say fgx equals mg sine theta. Where did that come from? Well, fgx, we should remember by now. Uh, and if we don't, you should go take a look at the other video. But the x component of our weight is going to be equal to mg sine theta. And our FGX can also be written as mass times the acceleration in that direction. So now I've got an equation that says mass times acceleration equals mass times acceleration due to gravity times sine theta. Simple enough, the mass is canceled. And I'm left with exactly what we saw before when we resolved just based on the acceleration due to gravity. If we plug this in a calculator, we'll get the same exact answer. 